Hi, Eric Beard, back to talk a, a little bit about biomechanics of the spine, and I'm going to touch base on this old war horse here, the spinal rotation machine that was manufactured in the late 70s or at earliest uh, or 1980. When we look at the posture that most people have in the 21st century, they're collapsed. As, as Rolf or Eric Dalton said, we're in a flexion addiction society. Our spine is collapsed, we're held forward like this. Now, if you were to play along and wrap your hands across your shoulders like this and rotate one side, rotate to the other, you'll notice that we don't move or articulate very well. We're collapsed through the thoracic spine. The rib cage is in the way. It basically holds us up. If we didn't have a rib cage in the way, we'd basically be kissing our own knees. We completely collapse. All the load is transferred away from the bones. We overload the ligaments. We have the muscular system doing too much work instead of being able to hold ourselves here very efficiently. If we line ourselves up correctly, and then we want to allow ourselves to rotate. Things happen much better from here than down here. Now, what happens is that's transitioned into an exercise standpoint. If we examine the biomechanics of the lumbar spine, we have approximately two degrees of transverse plane action at each intervertebral joint. Now, if we have five lumbar vertebrae, and you also add in S1 and and we also add in T12, you're going to have each of those segments that's going to allow approximately 12 degrees of transverse plane movement the lumbar spine. So if I have an inclinometer or a goniometer, and this is zero degrees here, and this is 45 degrees out to the side, 12 degrees of rotation is going to be about that much. That much to the right, that much to the left. And that happens at the lumbar spine before we move into loading the discs and loading the ligaments, that's not good when we have uneven wear or excessive wear at that area. And we know that most disc injuries are going to happen in L5, S1, and L4, L5. And we know that most injuries are going to occur in the transverse plane because people can't decelerate eccentrically or isometrically stabilize. So when people come in and want to work their back, what do they do is they grab onto the beast like this, they slouch forward, and they flail side to side to side to side. And what happens is they create excessive movement at joints that are not aligned correctly and they move beyond the range of motion that they have. If we get an optimal alignment and we maintain stability of the lumbar spine and we focus on transverse plane action in the thoracic spine, by the way, we have 45 degrees of movement at the, tra at the thoracic spine. Now, this looks much different. This machine is much maligned, but if we do it correctly, there's tremendous benefit to the musculature that's going to rotate the thoracic spine, particularly the thoracic, the thoracic spine. If we, look at the, if we look at the multifidi and the rotatories and the intertransversari, we can get some wonderful benefit to rotating the thoracic spine. We're going to engage the core. We're going to minimize movement at the thoracic spine. And remember, we only have about 45 degrees of movement, so we're going to make sure that we go from zero, you can come across back this way, but zero to 45, and I know the camera's right there, it's low control. So I'll give you a posterior view of what this might look like in this beast. Up tall, good alignment, maximize movement at the thoracic spine, minimize movement at the lumbar spine. If you are going to train the spine of the transverse plane, which I would recommend, make sure we promote stability here and make sure we promote mobility here, especially in the transverse plane, because a lumbar spine is a terrible thing to waste. Transverse plane action for that thoracic spine, help posture, help alignment, and it will help you. I'm Eric Beard. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.